Hi guys and welcome back to another video. Today I am bringing you my July TBR. In the month of July I intend to read mostly MENA books, so Middle Eastern and North African books. I appreciate that a lot of the time when I read especially uh, Asian inspired books I do tend to lean towards East Asian and frequently f don't read books that are from you know Western Asia um, and I would like to rectify that uh, so far this year I have read I think two books that are Western Asian and the rest have all been East Asian so um, I've dedicated a month specifically to reading North African um, and uh, Western uh, Asian books and I'm, I'm really excited for this TBR I do have a decent amount of YA on here and I haven't been reading YA however these are ones that I'm really hyped for so we'll see how it goes um, but I'm definitely planning on trying my hardest to get to all of these is the only middle grade that I have on this list and it's so dinky it should be really easy for me to get to and I am hoping to maybe read this one with my daughter um, and that is Remeza by Radia Hafiza and this is an, uh, a fairy tale retelling but with an Islamic protagonist and we have so we have Remeza Remeza let down your hijab is what it says on the cover and I think that we have Remeza being obviously a Rapunzel style character and then we have her also wandering into other fairy tales so we have um what were the other two called um because yeah it's like three stories like Cinderella and I don't know there's a third one. I think it might be a Snow White style character. I am unsure. Oh, uh, Sleeping Sarah. There we go. Um, and I'm very excited for this. There is a sequel out to it now as well. So if I enjoy this, I will pick that up as well. I'm loving having um, a broader diversity of protagonists for my kids reading. I think that it's great for them to be exposed to as many different cultures as they can. Um, and I think the familiarity of the stories, but with a whole new take on them, will be a really interesting way of consuming the story for them. Continuing on with YA, I have the Sands of Arabia series by uh, Hafsa Faisal. And um, this one is a Robin Hood retelling. I think we have a girl who dresses up as a man so that she can steal from the rich uh, to help feed the poor. Um, and she has become kind of a legend. And um, the there is like a prince that is known as the Prince of Death who needs to hunt her down. And then they both need to end up kind of working together. And I think it's an enemies lovers style story. And the first book is We Hunt the Flame. And these covers are some of the prettiest covers I have ever seen in my life. Um, and then we have We Free the Stars. Another YA that I have here is in fact a dystopian and that is Interment by Samira Ahmed. And this one is a um, near future dystopia in which um, we are, it's centered on Islamophobia. So in America, all Islamic beings are now considered a threat to America and have been put in these kind of internment camps. Um, and I believe that obviously the central discussion on this is how close America already is to such a horrific society and um, I'm, I, I appreciate that it's probably going to be quite hard hitting but I think that it's going to invite a very important discussion so I'm very excited to get to it regardless. And the last of the YA that I have is The Candle and the Flame by Nafisa Assad and this one is a Silk Road fantasy or what it's called I believe is a Silk Road fantasy um, and this one is a high fantasy standalone I'm very excited for and we have a girl with the fire of a jinn a city scarred by violence Fatima lives in the city of Noor a thriving stop along the Silk Road there the music of myriad of myriad languages fills the air and people of all faiths thread their lives together However, the city bears scars of its recent past when the chaotic tribe of Shayatin Jin 
slaughtered its entire population except for Fatima and two other humans. Now ruled by a new Maharaja, Noor is protected from the Shayantin by the Ifrit Jinn of Order and Reason and by their commander Zulfika. But when one of the most potent of the Ifrit dies, trouble brews and Fatima is changed in ways she cannot fathom, ways that scare even those who love her. Old in hand, Fatima is drawn to the intrigues of the Maharaja and his sister, the affairs of Zulfika and the jinn and the dangerous magical battlefield. Nafisa Assad weaves an immersive tale of extraordinary magic and the importance of names, fiercely independent woman, enticing food, and perhaps most importantly, the work for harmony within a city of a thousand religions, cultures, languages, and cadences. And um, yeah, I mean, who wouldn't be drawn to that cover? And then with that synopsis, just yes. Also, this is one of those that has like a really pretty naked hardback. I actually bought the paperback of this book and then Amazon accidentally sent me the hardback. And I was like, hi, you sent me a uh, hardback. And they were like, oh, we'll keep it. <laughs> so uh, here we go. And um, cool. But yeah, I'm very excited to, to get into this one. It sounds like it's going to be very whimsical and I'm here for it. Moving into the realm of adult fantasy, I have The Bird King by G. Willow Wilson. And this one is a historical fantasy that is set in Spain, which is where I live. Um, so we have the acclaimed second novel from award-winning author G. Willow Wilson. The Bird King tells the story of Fatima, a Circassian concubine to the last sultan on the Iberian Peninsula, and her dearest friend Hassan, the palace mapmaker. Hassan has a secret. He can make maps of places he's never seen and bend the shape of reality with his pen and paper. When representatives of the Spanish monarchy arrive to negotiate the Sultan's surrender, they see Hassan's gift as sorcery, a threat to Christian rule. With their freedoms at stake, what will Fatima risk to save Hassan and escape the palace walls? As Fatima and Hassan flee to safety with the help of a clever jinn, the bird king asks us to consider the nature of love and freedom at a time when the West and the Muslim world were not yet separate. And um, I haven't read anywhere near enough um, books set in Spain that are fantasy. And this one just sounds like everything I want it to be. I have been to Granada, which I assume is where this is set because that's where that was the last stronghold of um, Muslim rule on the Iberian Peninsula. So I assume this is set in Granada. Granada is one of my favorite cities in the world. Um, I love going to Granada and it just seems like it'd be the perfect place to write a fantasy. So I'm very excited to be getting into this one. It is a standalone um, and um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm really, I think it's gonna, I mean, it's gonna make me wanna go on holiday to Granada, which I'm not doing in summer because at the minute it is over 40 degrees and we're only in June. But I hopefully will be whisked away to my memories of Granada with this book. And last on today's TBR, we have the adult fantasy series I plan on reading. And has anyone guessed it? Of course, it's the Deba Bad series by S.A. Chakraborty. And this one is um, a very, very beloved booktube favorite series. I have been dying to get to this series for so long. So I am very excited to finally have it in my hands. And um, yeah, it's, it's, I believe an Egyptian fantasy, but the, also we go into the jinn realm. So it's either portal fantasy or the jinn world is still part of our world. I'm not sure, but like Devabad is like the city of of the gin, but I don't know if that's still in our world or not. Um, but yeah, so we have um, a girl. Oh, what was her name? I can't remember. Uh, Nari? Yeah. We have a girl named Nari who is a healer. She has healing magic, and uh, she, but she's also a con woman. She works in a market in Cairo where 
the wealthy will come for her healing and she will over diagnose them she'll tell them they have this terrible terrible disease and then sends them to her friend at the apothecary uh, where they spend a ton of money and then they split the profits so um i believe that one day she kind of gets caught out on her con and gets wrapped into the world of the gin i think when she uses actual magic um and yeah i'm i'm very very excited to give this one a go the font is absolutely minuscule and the books are chunky so i am in for one heck of an immersive time and i'm super excited for that so we have city of brass kingdom of copper and empire of gold which is a whopper is the font still tiny the font still tiny how long are you oh okay we have huge glossaries as well yes love when we have glossaries uh, 752 pages of tiny font yes love it super excited anyway those are all the books that i plan on reading in the month of july let me know if you've read any of these and your thoughts on any of them also if you have other kind of um mena recommendations you know gin slash north african slash you know western asian recommendations i have got some tasha suru books on my list as well um and i think it's upon a burning throne i'm waiting for the series to conclude um but if you know any more do leave all the recommendations because i do need to broaden my horizons and i'm very excited to be getting into all of these so yes that is it from me for today um so yeah in the description box you'll find links to my twitter instagram and goodreads as well as my blog in case you want to check me out on any of those if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up subscribe if you've not already and hit the bell icon if you want to get notified every time i post a new video and that is all from me for today guys bye